welcome back to Excel 2016, Module 3, and this is Part 3. This section will be looking at autofill and the different options that we can do with it. Before we get into the actual worksheet that we have been working with, I wanted to show you some of the things that you can do with autofill. So you can see I have some areas set up that we can use. None of these are formulas. Many people think of using this autofill option to fill in formulas. It'll do a lot of other things, some of which we'll explore in our worksheet that we have been working on for the corn yield. But let's take a look at these. So let's say I had a number and I wanted to copy that number. What you need to do is get your mouse over this corner dot. You see the dot at the bottom? The mouse turns into a cross. This is called the fill handle. You'd push the mouse down and then drag across as far as you want to copy you can see because I only selected one value of 5, it copies that all the way across. Now let's say I wanted to work with a series of numbers. So if I want it to number sequentially, I need to highlight enough numbers that it can identify my pattern. And then grab that fill handle which is always going to be in the bottom right hand corner and drag it down and you can see it will number sequentially. It does not have to be sequential numbers as long as Excel can identify your pattern it will go by twos. It will also follow a pattern backwards, but you do have to remember you have to grab the fill handle and you can drag it the other direction, but you always have to start in the bottom right where the fill handle is. So it went up by fives for that. I can use this to fill in a group of dates. If I have column headings with the months, I can do them typed out. I can also do them abbreviated. You only need one month abbreviated in there or typed in there for it to understand what you're trying to do. It also does days of the week, three day abbreviation, or the actual days of the week typed out. So you can see there are a lot of things that you can do with this autofill option. So I hope you will take advantage of these as some time saving techniques as you work in Excel. Alright, so now we're going to actually get into the file that we've been working with. We've been working in the Wingate workbook and we are going to be working on the growth worksheet. So we're going to go over to growth and we're going to look at some of these values here. For example, farm day. On D5 we are going to type day one. Then I'm going to click on that bottom fill handle and I'm going to drag it down all the way oops I lost my mouse there we go all the way down to row 163. And you can see that it sequentially numbered our days for us and filled that in and we only had to type the first one. 
If you do miss that handle, you can grab it again. Also, you need to look at these options because down here it says, are you trying to fill the formatting? Do you want to fill this in without copying the formatting? Are you trying to do a flash fill? Are you filling in a series? Or were you trying to copy that value into each of those cells? So if it did the wrong thing, you can come in here and change these options as well. All right, let's take a look at dates for the growing season. So we're going to come up here to B7. And we are going to put a date in here of 4-15-2017. Then over here in the date column, on L5, we're going to enter a formula Oops. that references it back to the starting date. And I entered this in the wrong date. We're going to enter it in the planting date. Okay, so 4, 15, 17. Then we're going to enter a formula here equals B7. So what this will do is it will look at whatever date we enter there and it will automatically display that value in L5. Now to calculate the next day, we're going to say that's equal to a formula that is the date that is displayed in L5 plus 1. Now what we can do is we can drag that fill handle and copy the formula the rest of the way down our table. That fills in the rest of the dates for us within that range. So if we decided that they were not able to, for whatever reason, plant on 415, that they had to wait until 425, if we change the planting date, you can see now that every date in column L has also been revised. So, for B8, we have some milestones that we have to look for. So we're going to take the planting date in B7, and we're going to add to that the number of days in O12. And that gets us to emergence. So before we copy these, 
this particular formula down, we will need to look at doing some cell reference exploring and understanding what the different cell references are. Because if I just simply copy this as we have before, the first leaf says it takes eight days. But what this formula calculated was eight days from the emergence, which is incorrect because it changed our cell reference. So the next video that we will do will explore cell referencing to make sure that you understand which types of cell references you have to use in some of your formulas. And then we will go back and revisit how we can effectively adjust this formula so that we can copy it and get correct results in the section B9 through 12.